How's it going, YouTube? It's Kai. Um, so a lot of you probably have watched my previous montages. I'm assuming I'd hope so. I mean, I, I would imagine that's why you're here. Uh, if not, maybe do that before watching this video. Anyways, today's gonna be a little bit different from the ones I typically post. Today, we're doing a guide video. Yeah, yeah, I know what you're thinking. Why the hell is this idiot making a guide video? He throws for content half of his games. Exactly. I'm not making a guide on how to be the best play possible or how to win all your games. I'm making a guide on how to look cool as fuck while playing the Blights. <laughs> Introducing a new series I like to call a Content Killer's Guide to Blights. Now, this video will be one in a series of multiple killers where I talk to you guys about how to do the dumbest but yet coolest shit that you could ever think to do on these killers in order of just looking fancy or, you know, outplaying a survivor in the most neat way possible. If you're looking for a guide to help you get better at Blight, there are millions of them. If I had to personally recommend one, I'd recommend Knotbreads, and if not that, Lilith Omen always describes text in a pretty solid manner, so go check those out. This is more of like a useless advanced guide. Like, things that you won't need to be good at Blight, but you know, things that you want to have when you're good at Blight. We're gonna get into a couple of the things that I do in my games and the things that I clip, how I do them, and how to master them easily. So without further ado, let's get into it. When I say shadow bumping, it's one of the more important things on this list that I've had to talk about so far. And what it essentially means is colliding through an object in order to give yourself another rush to put yourself in a better position to down a survivor. Now before I get into how to do this, I'm going to clarify. I know I did not discover this. I'm simply coining the term. However, I have found a couple spots besides Shack that are bumpable, which I will show an example of. So as we can see, we're positioned here on the area of crows. Upstairs, the pallet has been dropped, and the survivor is in a really good situation. Or so they think. So now what we're going to do is slow the video down and find out what exactly I just did. So the first thing I'm going to do is charge my rushes. This is to build speed and to make sure that this technique can actually work. The next thing I'm going to do is look at this branch here. Now to quickly explain why we want to build up speed in the first place is simply to build momentum when we're sailing from the top story. If we don't rush at least two or three times, we are not going to clear the stairs and we will not land where we need to to get it down on the survivor. Additionally, if we use all four of our rushes to build up a lot of speed, we will clear the stairs but we won't have a rush to down the survivor. Instead, we will bump and go into fatigue, most likely causing us to miss the stairs or just stare at the survivor as they watch you in disbelief. This branch has a hitbox, surprisingly enough, a very small one that the blight can actually bump through and not get stalled. So the idea is to build up your rushes, ideally until about three rushes so that you have one remaining to rush the survivor. You will bump through the hitbox of the tree branch and then rush to the survivor. Do it quick enough and the survivor won't be able to react in time and you'll get an easy hit or down. It is important to note that the Eerie main building is a very specific example of shadow bumping and a version that can only work on its own in that specific situation. However, it is the only consistent shadow bumping spot. The rest are very RNG dependent and a lot of them just depend on, you know, what tiles are close to what. A lot of it depends on hill spawns as well. As we can see here, I'm on the hill of Eerie of Crows, and I notice a tree that looks a lot similar to the main building. So I bump off the branch and go after the survivor and land a hit in a quick and unexpected way. Now the last type of shadow bumping that we're going to be covering is the Shack Window Shadow Bump. Now this is one that you've probably recognized and seen before, and that is because it is the strongest way to outplay Shaq as Blight in the most unexpected fashion. However, as discussed earlier, shadow bumping spawns are very RNG and Shaq is no exception. Due to multiple reasons, whether it be the hill being too far away or the Shaq window not having the right collision, there's a lot of things that goes into making or breaking a Shaq shadow bump. And sometimes it's just not possible. 
However, if you believe that a shack window is close enough to a hill, simply test how many bumps it takes to get at or near the shack window and see if you bump through it. If you bump through it, go for a play, and if not, keep trying. Sometimes it doesn't work, sometimes it does. This is what I mean when I said it was like a useless sort of advanced guide, because you won't be able to apply this in almost all any of your matches. It'll be like a one and done type of thing, unfortunately. So I know we just talked about a super specific example, only possible in a handful of situations on a handful of maps. But what if I told you that this example is only specific to one spot in one map? But, 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 wait, wait, before you discard it, it works almost every single time. Yeah, I know I got you there with that one. Yeah. It, it, anyways. <laughs> but yes, the RPD Parkour Blade. One of the newer things on our list that was discovered by a friend of mine named Code. Now, not to roast him. I love you, Code, don't hurt me. But I feel like I've gotten this to work more times than he has, and I also feel like he stopped going for it. So I feel okay with sharing his discovery. Anyways, enough of the shenanigans. The RPD Parkour Blight is a practical way of making distance across the middle of the map and surprising survivors on the generator. Now I will say while effective, this method is the most challenging one that I will mention in the entire video, so don't be frustrated if it doesn't work correctly on the first try. Essentially how the RPG parkour blade goes is that you're gonna be aiming your camera towards the lights on the top of the generator while overlooking the hole in the balcony, right over the right side of stairs on the RPD main building. You're going to use at least three rushes. You can leave one to where you can rush after you bump on something, or you can use all four and use your fifth to just smack a survivor on a generator. Either one works. The idea is that you're going to use the allotted bumps you have decided, and then hurl yourself over the top of the welcome desk and the middle area of the map. Now, sometimes you might misalign yourself or you might bump on something, slide off something, it's very annoying to practice. But once you get it down, I can guarantee you this will work 90% of the time because survivors just don't expect it. I mean, look, come, on, come on, let's be honest. Would you expect this to happen to you in a blight game? That's right, I didn't think so. The last little trick we'll be talking about in this video, I believe is my favorite. Because while the other two are showcases of extreme precision and extreme skill, as well as some beautifully timed RNG, this one's just funny. And it also works a hell of a lot. So if you're confused by the title, it's because that's exactly how it's supposed to be. Low pro play isn't a thing that should exist, but it does. Here's what I mean. So a popular blight add-on is Compound 33, an iridescent add-on that lets you bump into pallets and break them just with your rush, instead of having to, you know, like attack M1 into them or, you know, break them with a space bar, you can just bump into them and they explode. But what if I told you that you could do more with this add-on? You just didn't know it. So there's a common tech used by blight players called the V1 tech, essentially where you get up close to a surface and rush instantly disregarding your fourth rush and going right to your third rush, allowing you to get around edges and corners extremely quickly, giving survivors little to no time to react. This is essentially what low pro blight is, except you're not V1ing a wall or a corner. You're V1ing the pallet. Let me explain. So again, when it comes to low pro blight, it's a lot like the RPD parkour blight in that it's going to be very finicky to practice, but once you get it, it's going to be something that throws off a lot of survivors. Plus, like I said, it, it looks fucking hilarious. So to set up for low pro blight, you want to get a survivor to drop the pallet in front of you without stunning you, so that you don't lose too much distance on them. What you're then going to do is walk up to the pallet like you would a wall on a V1, but right before you rush and spam it like you would a V1, you're going to back up and hit your SQ once, and then rush into the pallet. If done correctly, you're going to rush to the pallet and lag forward a little bit, 
You'll hear the blight scream, meaning that your rush is still active, and you will slowly but surely start to catch up to the normal rush speed. This will essentially have cancelled the fatigue that the Compound 33 add-on should give after breaking your paddle with your rush, allowing you to continue your rush chain. The only downside to the low pro blight tech is that the start of your rush will be significantly slower than it normally would, giving survivors time to react to your rushes. However, if a survivor doesn't know you're going for this and you hit this on them, chances are they're not going to be prepared for what you just did and you'll be able to catch up to them with ease. So that's the guide so far. Hopefully you guys found some of my tips useful. If not, <laughs> cry about it. The video's still live. On a serious note, I'm really happy I could make this. I know some people are asking about the stuff that I do, so I'm glad I could kind of make a somewhat informative video about it. If you guys want a blade guide about some stuff that, you know, isn't like impractical and only works in certain situations, let me know. I actually had a lot of fun making this video. But um, until next time, thank you guys for so much for watching. I'll see y'all probably in another montage, let's be real. <laughs> see you guys.